How's it going, folks, and welcome back. It's episode number 39 of Park to Primera today, the first leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League. Of course, we have been drawn against Porto. It is mid-February. We have played a fair bit since you were last here, including a transfer window where... We did some business. We didn't have the busiest of transfer windows. The options really weren't there, but you can see dealings have happened plenty that aren't actually happening just yet. But well, the big first headline signing is Elisha Awusu. He is joining us. We talked about him last time. A really, really good defensive midfielder. Can also play at centre-back and centre-mid. His slight inability in the air, shall we say, with 12 jumping reach means I probably wouldn't play him as a centre-back. But I think as a defensive midfielder slash centre-mid option, he's a really, really good player. Great defensive ability, really good physicals. And uh, yeah, to pick him up on a free transfer... Good bit of business for a player in his prime. Now, another man that we've picked up is Gabri Vega. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Spanish youngster, plays for, I believe, Arsenal in real life. Does he play for Arsenal in real life or does he play for Celta Vigo? I, I may not know. I think he actually plays for Celta Vigo, looking at it. Uh, you can see here he's had a number of loan spells, but at 22 years old, they've decided he really hasn't got it, what it takes, I suppose, to play at Arsenal. But for us, I think he could be a really useful option. He's 22 years old, a uh, Attack, more attacking centre mid. He plays centre mid and centre attacking mid. I think when you look at his polygon, you kind of get a vibe for what he is. Uh, could be a little bit of a playmaker for us, but I think more likely to slot in in the box-to-box -box midfielder role. Probably is more of a squad option. Not a huge amount of money paid on wages either for him. And, uh, well, we, of course, also signed Al Asmar. In the end, I decided not to exercise the buy now clause, so he is joining us at the end of the season. In terms of pre-contract agreements, one player who will be departing us is Jordan Ferry. Of course, came in a couple of years ago to be a tutor, to be a mentor. He served his purpose at 32 years old. With Vega coming in, I just decided it wasn't time to renew his contract. As a result, he's made an agreement to go to Socho at the end of the year. In terms of actual transfers that happened in January, not a huge amount, but maybe one on a slightly kind of downbeat note. Bicho, he's left the building. He's gone to Osasuna for 1.5 million. He got a goal or two, in fact, in three appearances, and then... He went and got injured, and he's out for between seven weeks and two months. Of course, he has injury proneness issues. I think we got a little bit lucky, maybe, to ship him on when we did. A good decision, maybe in hindsight, even if he has started well at Osasuna, uh, 1.5 million. A decent sum of money. You can see here a few other players went out on loan to other teams playing in Spain, quite notably. Uh, Bruno Trigo has departed to go and play for Ibar in La Liga 2. He's hopefully going to get some regular minutes. Another man who's made a move is the youngster Salgado. He has gone to Elche. You can see, already played five games in La Liga. Great for the 19-year-old to be getting regular first-team football in our division. And while another player who's gone to Ibar is Pettersson. Of course, we signed him a few years ago. Spent a half a season on loan in Norway. He's now returned to Spain. He's playing in La Liga too. Uh, one of a few players who we will be keeping an eye on, but I am starting to lean on the side of realising probably not going to ever be good enough for our first team. Now, in terms of transfers in, there's two. I'm going to set expectations low here. They're not the most exciting, so I am sorry, but one of them is pretty good, if you ask me. It's not this guy, although Zakuani is not a bad player. Transfer listed by Borussia Dortmund. He is 16 years old. We've signed him for £85,000. It's just such a low-risk transfer. As I said, he was transfer listed at 16 years old. I feel like when a guy playing for Dortmund's youth team and the B team is transfer listed at 16, you kind of just feel like you have to do the deal if it's cheap. £85,000. It's a low-risk investment. And while the other signing we've made for £52,000 is Alexis Pye. I really wish I could give him the number 3.142 on the back of his shirt. Sadly, I can't. I'm not even sure if that's the number for Pi. I'm just recalling memories from when I was at high school. But looking at Pi here, he's very good. It's probably not said Pi, but I'm, you can't tell, tell me it's not now. I'm settled on it. Uh, he's been playing for Lons for a number of years in France. He's only 18 years old. His contract was running up at the end of the year, so we approached to sign him, made that agreement, and then when I went to buy now, they said £52,000. I said... Absolutely. So Alexis joins us. He's only 18 years old. Loads of potential ahead of him. This might end up being one of my best transfers ever. I don't want to set the expectations too high too soon, but I'm hopeful. If we just look at him compared to Coke Vegas, who is our current, or should I say, 
previously was our current second choice goalkeeper, he's a little bit of an improvement. If you ask me, Alexis, only 18 years old. Of course, if we just compare him to Machado, a little bit of a way to go. He could do it though. So despite that January transfer window, 60 million still in the bank, still 16 million in transfer budget that I didn't end up spending. Uh, the committed wage spend has shot up a little bit, but next season's wage budget is more than going to cover it. Once the few free players that we've agreed to sign end up joining the club, it won't be a problem. Of course, worth remembering, we have a new stadium in progress, which is one of the reasons uh, why we have all this money in the bank account, which really isn't going into the transfer budget. I'm hoping... And uh, if it doesn't happen, I'm going to be very confused. But I'm hoping that money has been saved by the board for the stadium. So there is no loan necessary. Or if there is a loan, it's not a big one. Uh, they're currently saying 30,000 seats. That would be a nice little step up from what we've got currently with 22,000. Of course, El Sardinero is a slightly older stadium, shall we say. It'd be nice to move into somewhere new. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what's been going on off the pitch since you were last year. Shall we talk about matches? Because we have played games, everyone. Now, of course, last episode, we had the Super Cup, and since that little bit of disappointment in the final, we've played a hell of a lot of games. Uh, perhaps one of the most notable of the results was actually the game that immediately preceded the Super Copper. We took on Valencia. We won 2-0. So there was a little bit of rotation required for this game. In the end, we won 2-0. It was very against the run of play. Mejica, clinical finish for the first, and then they kind of came on to us. They got more attacking, and with that, the opportunities opened up to catch them out. And catch them out, we most certainly did. Pooch, cutting inside, hit on his left peg. Great to see him kind of, I suppose, contributing. Of course, joined us on loan from Barcelona. Been on loan with us for two years. Three goals and two assists. He's played well this year. Sadly for us, he's injured. He's injured for three to four weeks. And I did try to approach to sign him. He wasn't interested. He's going to Werder Bremen. Yeah, was a little, little bit gutted about that, if I'm being honest. And while following on from that fortuitous win in La Liga, uh, we had the Copa del Rey kickoff, where we won in the first round 5-0. Convincing team performance, that is to be expected. Uh, you can then see we took on Athletic Club Bilbao. 1-1 draw, uh, worth noting in this game. They had a sending off. I wanted to go on and get the winner. It didn't quite happen. I also realised, should acknowledge this, uh, Capanu was sent off against Valencia. Uh, that, my friends, was his second red card of the season. Uh, yeah, they are starting to add up the suspensions, aren't they? Also, he's learned to play defensive midfielder. He picked that up very quickly. I love the fact that I drop in the fact he's been sent off and then I'm trying to distract you with the new position stuff. Don't get me wrong, I am concerned about the red cards. Now, against Mallorca, we won 2-0 and we followed that up with a win to end the month of January against Nastic. Uh, it finished 5-1 in the Copa del Rey, taking on some lower league opposition. Nice to get a win there. And well, into the month of February, we went a win against Almeria. In this game, it was good to see Mark get on the score sheet alongside Jordan Ferry. Uh, Mark, of course, a player who we've been very reliant on the last couple of years, joined us on loan from Manchester United. Remarkably consistent, might I add, as well over two seasons. Uh, the kind of player who I'd love to sign permanently. I feel like I've been saying that for months. At this moment in time, I think a loan for next season again is the most probable outcome if indeed we are going to have him playing for us next season. After that game against Almeria, we were back in the Copa del Rey for a game that I did consider live coming, but I decided I wanted to get to the Champions League. It was against Real Madrid. We lost on penalties and Velez missed the all-important one. Velez, I've bigged you up so much. We just don't have penalty takers here. The game against Atleti last episode was a bit of a fluke in hindsight. Truth be told, though, this was a really good performance by us. Very rare that we lose a game and I come out with such optimism. You can see here, Real Madrid played a really, really strong team against us. They were not holding back. And so to take them to extra time, to debatably have the better of the play over 120 minutes... Uh, I was happy. I suppose we should acknowledge the fact they did score with the last kick of the game. I will tell you now, as they scored, there was a small part of dread in my mind and a small part of relief. If we did bottle it, it wasn't going to be in video form. Uh, I probably would have had a meltdown. Anyway, two more games to talk about real quick. We took on Getafe, a team who started the season really well, but have fallen off the pace as of late. A 3-2 win there wasn't all that convincing. Great to see Corridor grab a couple. And well, in our most recent game... Oh my word, what a match this was. What a... I mean, should we watch the highlights? Now this game against Real Valladolid, it had no right to be a classic. It had no right to be as good as it was. They scored there to make it 1-0. 
That was the only goal scored in the first 90 minutes of the game. In the 91st minute, they doubled their lead. I thought about going more attacking, and then I thought, that would just be pointless. Nothing's going to happen. What happened two minutes later? We grabbed one, but still. 93 minutes, 42 seconds. Five minutes of added time. We're not going to get another, are we? Well, uh, Hardy had other ideas. Clean for on goal. Nice ball by Martinez. Tucked it into the bottom corner. Cool as you like. We stole a point. We should be beating them even away from home. Uh, And also Pablo Torre got injured for another couple of months. But I was still happy. Despite all those negatives, the two late goals, they, they, they made my day. And well, in terms of where that league form leaves us, a little bit hit and miss. A few points dropped here and there. But ultimately, we are still in second place. Seven points ahead of Valencia, who we did beat in this recent run of games. We also beat Getafe. So we've done well against some of the teams around us. You can see Real Valladolid down in 13th. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be drawing 2-2 two, two of them. I shouldn't be happy about that, but I am. I think the big headline here really is... Real Madrid are still unbeaten. They are still ridiculously good. But for ourselves, I don't I don't want to say it too. There's 12 games left of the season. There's lots of football. Even if Pablo Torre is injured again, Champions League looks likely. And well, speaking of Champions League, that brings us on neatly to today's game, where we have the first leg against Porto. They have lost in their league now. They lost against Benfica 3-1. Still, 22 wins in 23. They could be a little bit of a challenge for us, shall we say, the Portuguese club. Rafinha is their key man. Very, very good player. They snapped him up from Leeds United for 34 million. Uh, Yeah, he is the man we've really got to look to shut down today. As for our team news, well, we talked about Pablo's Torre injury. We've talked about Pooch's injury. Um, There is a lack of attacking midfielders. My choice is Atakovic or Calderon. (sighs) Yeah. Now, the rest of the team is fairly rested up going into this game, although I should say uh, we're playing this game, obviously, midweek. After the game at the weekend, there are about seven first-team players who had like the little rest icon next to them. I gave them four days off. They have not been in training for the entire week. I'm hoping that's going to work well. Um, in terms of the squad, it's good with the exception of the centre attack in mid-position, as I already mentioned. Atakovic is the man I'm going to give the nod to. We did look to ship him off to China in January. There wasn't sufficient interest. I didn't want to sell him on for a loss. I still feel like there's something to get out of this man at 19 years old. Um, that said, if he doesn't perform, Calderon and his recent development just kind of... Makes me want to play him. I mean, even now, I'm sat having second thoughts, but I think I have to trust that Atakovic has the quality. I have to try and back the man I put £15 million into. And while the team around them is fairly standard by all accounts, there were no big sales in January, despite the interest from China for the likes of Blanco and Mejica. They didn't come back in later on in the window with any kind of tempting offer. Um, And, well, besides, as I mentioned, the centre attack in mid-positions, we're actually in quite a good spot where... Everyone's available. In terms of what the staff want to do, apparently I should start Capanu, Basilia should start, Orojo should start, Avramides and Hardy should start, or rather should be shuffled around. Apparently Avramides should be played at striker, but then also taken off for Hardy. I mean, that is conflicting advice by my staff. You know what? I'm going to ignore them. Do, do people actually listen to their staff on that screen? I feel like if you're a new player, there's probably some useful stuff there. But I trust my own intuition. This is my team. Let's get off to a good start here. First leg today, away from home. Worth noting, the second leg is in a couple of weeks' time. Tomorrow's episode will be a double header. So let's give ourselves a platform to, well, springboard off and uh, we'll hopefully make ourselves likely candidates for the second knockout round. Now, last episode that was a couple of days ago, I kind of said that this was a game I was quite happy to get. I felt like Porto were one of the easier teams for lack of a better word um i don't expect us to go far in the champions league this year if we could get past porto i feel like that would be great given the fact they were one of the easier opposition we could have been drawn against i want to capitalize on this opportunity but make no mistake we are a long way away i feel like from where we need to be and uh well well, let's hope that we can get something here as we may be called into some defensive action early but maybe now we can spring the counter-attack corridor to Mejica Martinez out on the right hand side I've got to say Martinez I'm a massive massive fan of I love the fact he's come through our academy and he just seems to pop up with goals I mean I'm trying to speak it into existence as his efforts blocked Atakovic hits the woodwork Zuma eventually gets it away 
Oh, five minutes gone. We are already looking for that critical away goal. And while we might have some defending to do here, Rafinha whips it in. Clear the way to Atakovic. Or maybe, just maybe, we could spring the counter-attack yet again. Twice in the first ten minutes, we bring it forward with purpose. Atakovic gives it away, but it's not over yet. Mahika hits it from range just wide of the post, but we are causing Porto some bother early on. It is worth acknowledging there was not a video over the weekend. Apologies for that. Given the fact that we're getting towards not the latest kind of stage in Football Manager's lifespan, but we are kind of eight or nine months in, uh, I have been trying to take things a little bit easier, a little bit wary of burnout. At weekends, you guys don't have lunch breaks, a lot of you, to watch videos on. Uh, so I find that views are slightly lower then. As a result, it felt like an optimal time this last weekend with the weather being quite nice to just get out and about a little bit more. Of course, don't fret. Videos for the rest of your lunch break all of this week. Uh, and well, hopefully, we're going to be finishing this season this week with some success somewhere. Um, obviously, I, I talked about the defeat to Real Madrid on penalties. I did kind of want to go on a run in the Copa del Rey. That was the quarterfinal we got knocked out in. Obviously, domestic success kind of hinges now in terms of cup competitions on the Champions League. I can't really expect that this year. Um, the league, though, looks relatively kind of standard. So this feels like the competition to put all our eggs into in terms of, uh, I, I suppose, our squad rotation and effort. As that is surely offside, it is. Machado stopped it, to be fair to him. So, yeah, they, this is kind of the competition I think we have to try to be most serious in. I feel like in the league, we can almost afford to rotate things a little without sounding too complacent. What I will say here as we approach the end of this first half is, I can't work out if this is good or bad. Is this good? Is this bad? I mean, look, there's been very few opp opportunities for either team. I would love an away goal, and away goal gives us something to take away. That said, given how good we can be at home, would I back us to beat Porto at home? I probably would. Obviously, if we were to get a scoring draw and this game finished as it is, we'd go out on away goals, which is why I feel like playing the away leg first. You want to go back with at least a goal to your name, even if you've also conceded one. At least that's my mantra in this kind of scenario. I feel like, especially in Football Manager, you can't gamble on giving yourself a clean sheet. Clean sheets, you can't really play for them in Football Manager. I mean, you can, but it's not always efficient or successful. Not much like in real football, to be completely fair. And well, Porto coming out for this second half with some renewed purpose. I'll tell you what, they've got some good players in their ranks, haven't they? Bergwijn, I've noticed they've got in the wide areas, as long as well as Rafinha. They've got Zuma as well. They've also got Oliveira. And well, Sergio just unleashes that. A minute into the second half. I told the lad 60 seconds ago I was happy with the first half. Why did I do that? Katabach with it down this left-hand side. Laid it inside to Bergwijn who then just lays it off to the edge of the area. So much work for Sergio Oliveira to do. But, well, we afforded him time and space to get off a shot, and it's just sailed into the top corner. 1-0 Porto, and, well, they might go for the quick 1-2 punch. Marsa heads it away. We've just missed a header. That, who, I bet that was Atakovic. It wasn't. It was Martinez. Martinez, you're fine. You know the, the kind of meme picture where it's Gordon Ramsay, it's the kids' version of MasterChef and the adults' version? Martinez, you know, I'll give him a cuddle when he makes a mistake. When Atakovic makes a mistake, I'm calling him a donkey and throwing a water bottle at him in the dressing room. That's because Martinez has earned, earned the right to be shown respect. And I just feel like he's going to score here. I've got, I've got this feeling. Number 22, back post. Watch him. Watch him. Maybe watch the ball as well. Blanco. Marsa. Blanco. Hits it. Oh, my word. It's hit the crossbar. I hope you weren't watching Martinez. Zuma kind of gets it half away. Bonus for us, Marcia, who gives it inside to Aframides. Blanco now with it. Marsa whips it in. I mean, Martinez should keep that alive. Pressure perhaps mounting as the ball is whipped in with some venom, but again, it's dealt with well. They've also got Depay in their team. This Porto team is really solid. Oh, my word. Has Atakovic scored? How, how should I feel? How should, I don't know how I should feel. Aframides has assisted him as well. It's all the lads who have kind of been... I, I don't know, disappointing this year. The unlikely heroes are becoming heroes. I'm not upset by it, though. 1-1, one, one, that's the away goal we wanted. It's a shame it's come after we've conceded one. They've also got Balotti. You know, you know when I said, oh, Porto would be a good, nice, easy draw? I saw kind of Rafinha as their key player and thought, well, they won't have anyone like that. They've got Bergwijn, they've got Depay, they've got Rafinha, they've got Balotti up top. And he's just scored. Um... 
that was within two minutes of us scoring. I mean, it was nice to be even again, wasn't it, for the best part of 60 seconds. Katabach again down this left-hand side. Corridor on a booking. Mm, do I want to bring in Kapanu? I really would like the ball-winning midfielder on the bench to be a player who I can bring on when our current ball-winning midfielder's got a booking and feel safe in the knowledge he won't get sent off. I don't know if I get that feeling with Stefan, but I feel like there's a change I need to make. Mark's been really poor at right back today, so I'm also going to bring in Correa here, who's not the best defensively, but he's a little bit quicker, which I hope will be able to help out with Katabach. But no, we've had two goals come down the, the near side as we watch this game here. And uh, I don't know, Mark's just not really looked at the races, if we're being completely honest. So I'm going to haul him off the pitch. Also a new ball winning midfielder. Oh, it's Katabach again. Just absolutely running the show. And then he does that. That was the psycholo psychological effect of Correa being on the pitch. It would have been a really good ball into the box if Mark was still there. So they're knocking around the ball really nicely now. I'm not enjoying this. Machado is an unconvincing, unconvincing save against his former club, of course, as he punches it over the crossbar. Martinez apparently should come off for Hardy. You know what? We'll do it. We'll do it. I think I might move Avramides out onto the right with Hardy coming on and play Hardy out on the left. I know there's some people who hate the fact to play Hardy on the left as an inside forward. It's where he plays well. And I know some of you, you have your inside forwards and you swear by the fact they have to cut in on their stronger foot. Hardy's the exception, not the rule, you argue. Or maybe you'll say that he's not the rule or the exception and that I'm just being an idiot. But I, I in Hardy, I trust. It's been a really even game, though. They've probably edged out this game, but a second goal here for them to kind of double the league would be harsh. We will hope that, of course, we can maybe get a smash and grab second away goal as Rafinha's threaded through and tucks it away nicely. Porto laying the gauntlet here. They are not going to be making tomorrow's game easy for us. And we're in this weird position now where I kind of want to go more attacking. Equally, if we can see the fourth, it really is just game over. I said about how you can't really play for a clean sheet at home, but if it stays like this, then you feel like the most likely result for us to get in order to go through would be a 2-0 home win. Um, now, you know what? I was thinking about changing some stuff, but I don't think I'm going to. I was thinking about going for this, but I don't think it's worth conceding a fourth potentially. And well, with that, the game kind of fizzles out into nothingness. We had a really poor second half there. I mean, Vers on a 6.9 apparently was our best performer. Ah, I mean, Atakovic has got a goal and still ended up on a 6.8. I feel like if you score a goal in Football Manager, the game just instantly puts you up to a, a 7.5 or something. So the fact he's managed to score a goal and not be our best performer and be a below a 7 probably means that he didn't do anything when he didn't have the ball. That is such a bitterly disappointing result. You can just see here the other Champions League results. A 3-1 defeat gives us a bit of a mountain to climb. Ourselves and Monaco in the exact same situation. Elsewhere, the theme of the draw, 1-1s. 1-1s across the board. In fact, half the, the games were 1-1s. So uh, make of that what you will. Four of eight games finishing with the exact same scoreline is bizarre. A few episodes ago, someone asked me to look at Savu here because he's got an 8.3 rating. Should we have a look at Savu? Um... I don't think I'm going to sign him. I mean, he's actually been signed this year during the season for 3.4 million. I mean, if Atakovic isn't worth 15 million, I'm not sure how Savu is worth 3 million, if I'm being completely honest. You can see here, we've got Sevilla in three days, but the squad needs resting. It's really not ideal. As I mentioned previously, uh, we've got a little bit of a break to the Champions League games. There is an international break at the end of the month, which is great for us. We've not got too many internationals, so hopefully gives a lot of these players who need a rest a chance to actually get a rest. In terms of tomorrow's episode, we're going to be coming back for a double header. We've got Atletico away from home and Porto at home. Of course, Atleti could be looking for some revenge after the Supercopper. And then the second leg against Porto. Bit of a mountain to climb. After today's game, um, we will hope that we can turn it around uh, with emphatic fashion. And I'm hoping, actually, if we play Atleti and we beat them, um, we will extend our lead over the team's kind of fourth and fifth and look to further cement our status as a Champions League club for next season, which, to be honest, we are not far away from right now. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. If you have enjoyed today's video, as always, do slap a like on it. We are back tomorrow. As I said, videos throughout this week, your lunch break... We'll have its daily dose of entertainment and well, hopefully I'll see you guys for Tuesday. It is me, Jack. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.